bigger distance. So it's just leading with a bigger rope. So when I feel like she's got this like sticking with me at a greater distance thing, yeah, then I'm gonna go, good job, come here. She's gonna go, what? Yeah. I was watching TV. I go, well quit watching TV, do it again. teaching stage. This is the, here's the rest of the stuff that you should know how to do so we can actually play together. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure she's not afraid of my stick, which she is a little bit, but she's not going to play with me if she's afraid of that. So I'm just going to keep throwing it on her back. she settles down and gets a more playful look, I do two things. Back up and then wait, wait for the face to change. So it's two rewards. One, you did great. You get to take my space. So we get to be equals again, not me imposing on you. And two, here's your treat. So the way I time the back up is I click, I, I start backing up there, when the head drops, and I keep backing up, and don't click until I ran out of space, but until I have two ears. I only had one that time, but you tried for two. Because two ears is that playful expression that we saw earlier. So, if you do one side, you have to do the other, because when you change eyes, you essentially change brains. It's like you start over with a new horse. And that's not something that true to horses, I don't feel like. I feel like that's mostly learned behavior because when people start over to other horses, they just act like it's going to be a big deal and it kind of is. Because the horses that I've worked with that haven't had any training at all, that's not an issue. Like my last thing, even sided from the get-go. Um, same with ponies that I've trained that I've been out to pasture for five years and never come up. Okay, so there's the change in her expression. So I back up and two ears. So I click. So we're gonna have some trust issues for sure here. Like it's gonna be hard to get her to play when she's so afraid of me that just this little extra movement is spooky to her. You hear her go every time it touches her. This stick, the only reason that I carry it is to make my body language more obvious. Because when I'm trying to do things where I'm like running around and I've got the rope in my hand and all this, it's hard to do the body language very effectively. The stick makes it a lot easier to see. So 
ultimately, I don't want a stick and I don't want a rope. They're both just a pain. She moves her back feet just fine. I don't think she's so afraid. Check out my stick now. No more friendly game. A lot of standing still. Just because I did something that put it in context. Something that I'm building here is the idea of her getting to come towards me and enter my space as a reward. So it's the reward before a reward. And it's like ringing the bell in Pavlov's song. Pretty soon, you you know, ring a bell, throw a piece of pork to a dog, and eventually, every time you ring the bell, the dog's gonna start salivating because he knows the pork's coming. Same thing in this case, I back up, she starts salivating or feeling good like she did just get a treat just because the treat comes after the backup. So it's called a conditioned reinforcer. They're conditioned to like it. You know, the horse, it doesn't mean a whole lot to her necessarily that I start backing up at first, but it, 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 she learns that it means something. And same thing with petting. Like, the next step in this, I might do something that I want from her. Back up, pet, then click. Um, that would be another way to build petting as a condition reinforcer. But the thing about that is people just think horses like to be fed and they have to learn. Horses aren't very tactile animals. I mean, two horses groom each other and that's about as touchy-feely as they get. They don't spend a whole lot of time grooming. I think I read it was about five minutes a day on average. When we want to come up and spend a whole hour just... <laughs> okay. Thank you. 